parliamentary um, uh, reports that have been um, uh, submitted. So would someone like to move that? Uh, Phil Clearwater, seconded um, Glenn Livingston. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. And we'll move to the first of those, which is the Acting Chief Executive's report. And I'll hand over to Jane Parfitt. Thank you. Um, as usual, I'll take this as read. Just a few comments um, on the way through. Leanne summarised yesterday's events really well and the way forward for us. They sort of make the executive summary ancient history in, in some ways. Um, but it's timely to remember that the Ellerslie Flower Show was actually put forward a week. Had we not done that, it might have been even worse. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> never thought of that. No. no. <laughs> so that's the only comments on the executive summary. Um, updates are shown in red. In terms of the answers to the questions, you'll notice there's still a couple of outstanding things one around the pedestrian safety in Barrington Mall, and secondly, the question on red zoned houses is still outstanding. And in actual fact, the building consents issued by Suburb Next Report arose from a question that councillors asked about um, mapping where the building consents were going, but we'll get to that one next. So other than that, as I say, I'll just take it as read and take any further questions. Would somebody like to move the um, report, receiving the report, so that we can... Yes, but I'll, I'll get a resolution first. So Raf Manji seconded Tim Scandrett. Uh, Raf Manji. Yeah, thanks, Jane. Um, page two, the Christchurch Art Gallery. It's, I thought this was supposed to be open next year, and it says be completed late 2016-2017. Is that a typo? Hope. I'll follow up and just confirm back to you by email. This. Sorry, what was that? It, but it, it looks like it's been updated. Late 15. The basic completion was supposed to be due, yes. I think, April 2015. Mm -hmm. But now it's got that extra bit in there saying, it and has. be completed late 2016. 2016. I'll follow up. Yeah, thanks. I think you're right. OK. Um, uh, 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 Glenn Livingston and then uh, Phil Clearwater. Thank you. If I could just ask a, thank you, a couple of questions. The first, uh, Jane, is in relation to Ngāpūna Wai there. That, uh, that reads as if the possible location is up for debate. Is that that's what it says? Oh, sorry, page two, where it says athletics trade replacement. Report to Council yeah, Eminent on whether the project should proceed at this location. It's so that's the preferred um, location. The master plan and preliminary investigation, the, the master plan, that proposal will come back to Council. So we, we've yet to make a decision on it, okay, but that's sure. going to be the proposal. That's yeah. right. Okay. And the, have you got a date for the Eastern Rec and Sports Centre there? Mm. So after discussing the date, it was going to be March. I'll come back to you on that. You're right, but it I was need a date. I haven't been given a date. Yep. Months. It's my expectation that it will be in March. Um, we'll either do it next week at the committee if we can. If we can't, we'll call a special committee meeting to consider it. But you know, it's my expectation that we will okay. discuss this during the month of March at some stage. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, Phil. Um, Jane, thank you for your report and the questions. I just want to ask about the questions on page seven, um, just starting with the, the Colombo Street Distribution Centre. Um, look, I just um, I take your point that the, the construction of, of the distribution centre isn't, um, isn't ideal for um, office space for use by um, community groups or not, not, and not-for-profits. But I just wonder if, in fact, in the, as a temporary um, solution, if we might be able to progress that somehow. Like, for example, at the end of last year, the, the upper mezzanine floor was quite empty, 
And I'm just wondering if, in fact, um, we still might be to progress. I'd be happy to, to meet with some staff, and I'm sure Councillor Scandrick would too, and possibly the community board chair, to look at how we could even um, utilise that space on a temporary basis. That's my first point. Thank you. I'll pick that up and we'll yep. set up something. And thank you, Jane. And I was also um, just going to comment about the Barrington um, Mall safety issues. They've, they've been long standing, and thank you for answering that. It just concerns me that, and I understand the point, that the mall owners um, might be concerned about um, what might be the best solution. And I, I certainly just hope that, um, that you know, that sort of um, approach doesn't influence a decision that might give us a less than best practice for safety. But I know, so I'm mm. interested in, in the outcome of those further discussions. Um, the, just on the traffic issues uh, for um, generally, but that's the third bullet point, particularly for L Lincoln Road, beside, think, and thanks to the staff for the work that's been done on that, but in, in addition, I just wonder if, like, one thing that has been done has been some other parking improvements have been made, which have assisted. But at one stage, there was the um, possibility of a worker's bus ad adding to um, trying to resolve the traffic congestion. And then that was um, Environment Canterbury, we're going to be looking at that with mm -hmm. council staff. So I just wonder if that is um, another option that might still be able to be ex explored there. Follow that up. Thank you. Uh, Vicky Buck. Thank you. Jane, I just wonder, in relation to the art gallery, given the expected completion date, late 2015, now opening, according to this, early 2017, whether it... I, I'm hoping, like, hell, that's wrong. Yeah. Um, but I'm just wondering if you couldn't maybe find out at morning tea or something and let us know during the... Um, course of this meeting, because yep. if it is 2017, I suspect it has a whole raft of other implications yep. in relation to a raft of things, which I won't go into here. Yep. Um, Yanni Johansson. Yeah, thank you. Um, just, just in regards to um, the Columbus Street Distribution Centre, and I'm not sure um, what's happening with the Westpac HUD hub in Addington and what the time frames are for that building, but it just seemed to me that a lightweight structure like that, that possibly at some stage needs to get relocated because its consent expires and you know Westpac comes back into the central city would be an ideal thing to be thinking about. Sorry, um, which, which one's so this? The Columbus Street Distribution Centre. So I was just really wanting to know that the issue behind this is the lack of affordable space for community groups in the city because of what's happened in the central city and the cost of um, moving into other places like in Addington, for example, which has gone through the roof. So there's a real need for affordable space for community groups that this was trying to address, which doesn't, you know, doesn't look like it's going to. So I'm just wondering whether we've considered um, transitional uses for other lightweight structures, for example, to go on the site. Obviously you wouldn't build a permanent thing here, but some sort of transitional lightweight temporary structure like the Westpac hub would seem to be, you know, maybe a possible solution. So th there's a bit of land out the back there, quite yeah. a bit. I think that's what Yanni's yeah. talking about. So we could take that into a conversation. And I, I do things. wonder whether we actually need a report around what, what we can do in terms of as a council around affordable community group space and probably could tie into what's happening with the community house coming back at some stage. Across the... Um, Across, across the community city. groups generally. Yeah. So it, that would require um, a survey of, you know, what people's needs and expectations and plans yeah. are. And I think cost, the Council of Social Services will have done a lot of that work. Yeah. And Community House will have been doing some of that work with its groups. Um, but I think, at a, at a, you know, I'm not sure whether it fits under CDC, but it is an, it's an issue for us as a city. And I think when you come to the grants round, you'll see a lot more applications for increased cost of rent, um, which I just don't think we have the capacity as a council to afford, but actually pro thinking about how we may provide some of that space is probably a more logical solution. Okay, so why don't we ask Jane to report back uh, to the next meeting yeah. with, uh, you know, basically a summary of what, what the community um, or the council of, um, yeah. council of Social Services um, 
has uh, by way of uh, information about that, that need across the, the community sector, um, and then perhaps with a recommended way forward uh, yeah. for the council, recognising that the increased cost of rents um, yeah. is going to impact on, on what they're going to be seeking from the council anyway. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we've yeah. got things like schools that are empty. Um, that yeah, could be we, possibly we, have a use. We have got yeah, so, on, ongoing you know, there, there discussions. There needs to be a kind of joint up strategy with central government. Which is still trying to get a yeah, meeting. Exactly. But, but there is, so, a, there is a, absolutely a willingness to meet with the Ministry of Education. So yeah. you know, we had a, a, a direct um, approach from the Minister of Education. Uh, the, the, it has been approved that we will meet with the uh, Ministry of Education, but yeah. best laid plans, okay. uh, we haven't actually been able to structure that meeting to suit the Ministry yeah. yet, so we will get there. Right. And, Thank um, you. and that, that is obviously a, a considerable um, priority. And just the, the second question was around the traffic issue. Is, it, is there a discrete traffic plan being developed for Addington? Because that's what was asked for. What's happening is all the private plan changes have been going through the system, they all look at localised traffic effects. They don't look at cumulative traffic effects. Resource consents have been granted for, again, um, localised traffic rather than commun cumulative traffic effects. And so what you're getting is all these consents being approved on the basis that people can either put in traffic lights and actually clog up the system. No one seems to be looking at the wider strategic traffic effects or the, or the cumulative traffic effects in this area, and from the response, I'm I'm not clear that there's any discrete piece of work that's being done in this regard. So, can you just follow can that up? That question. And I think it would be good to understand what is the discrete piece of work if it's happening. When is it expected by, and how does this relate to consents that are currently being granted? Yeah. Are there any other questions, uh, Jimmy Chen? Thank you. One question. <clears throat> Where is the information and what is the update status regarding to the Southwest Hongbi the new service centre and the library facility to replace the Sakbanda service centre? Because my understanding, uh, the staff uh, try to seek the proper location and the site, preferred site, for almost uh, 18 months. So before they have uh, information you know, in a major facility, but right now it disappear, so I don't know why. So where is this in the report? Not, yet. not oh, here. Sorry. Before you, yeah. not here. Oh, okay. Because the Sakban Service Centre is one of the you know oh, you major okay. facility, okay. Yep. and new, also pull a budget yep. in the three-year plan. But here I didn't what see you, what anyone. What you're saying is that th is that this list of uh, central city and major facilities is not. Uh, definitive, and you want to have added to that list. Not the originally here, my understanding. Yeah, it this was is one of the major facilities, same as like the Eastern Recreation Sports Centre. Yeah, yep. yep. we'll, we'll put it in. Yep. Yep. Yeah, sorry, yep. Yep. probably an oversight, but yes, it will go in. Yep. Thank there, you. there any other questions? I just had um, uh, one of my own. Well, it's not really a question; it's just a, a statement about how whether. Um, might have made a difference to the um, Ellerslie Flower Show, but it didn't make a difference to our attempt to liberate the National Memorial to Women's Suffrage on the 8th of March, which is International Women's Day. So um, we, had, uh, we had plans afoot uh, where we were going to, um, for a relatively small investment, be able to uh, take the fencing away from it permanently until, until the building's fully repaired. And uh, I was very excited to be able to inform the women's group, who then excitedly sent out uh, sent out breaking news uh, about how we were going to do that on on um, Saturday morning. And um, unfortunately, they've now had to send out some unbreaking news or heartbreaking news, which is that uh, we will have to wait. So I will be consulting with the National Council of Women and other women's organisations about whether they want to undertake a liberation ceremony before um, the 19th of September, uh, but it certainly will be, will be able to be done in time and until the, until the um, building itself is, is fully repaired. So I'd, I'd actually like to place on record my thanks to the staff, that, especially Terry Howes, who worked so hard to um, deliver a, a good result, and unfortunately the weather diverted his attention and uh, many others too. 
to, to that. Um, the, the last thing that I wanted to mention was the, and you know, without starting another debate, the Eastern Recreation and Sports Centre. Um, it was unfortunate that the headline uh, indicated that the council was uh, not proceeding. Um, or that it, the Eastern Recreation Sports Centre was on hold. It, it's not on hold. We are going through a process of determining now um, a process for determining the site. Uh, but I think that uh, the point that I was um, attempting to make was simply that you know we can sit around um, this table and vote an extra million dollars here, an extra million dollars there on different projects it all makes an impact on the um, ability of this council to meet the obligations that have been made. And yes, we do have to re revisit things. And I just have to say that there is, there is something not quite right with a process that says uh, we will set aside $30.5 million uh, when we don't actually know what the cost of building a facility will be. Um, and, uh, and so the level of expectation that's driven up in the community is that is the amount that will be spent. Um, I, I know that I've been um, talking to a number of people around the, the options um, around New Brighton, uh, more in terms of the legacy around the approach that's been um, proposed there uh, by local community groups coming together. And I think the master planning process has started to look far more joined up um, over recent months, and I think that's a really good outcome. So, um, you know, I'm just saying that uh, despite the, the headline, I think that this has enabled the communities to think actually a little bit more um, broadly about what we could achieve across the East, because the East has, you know, suffered so much, and there is so much that we are going to have to do in order to restore a sense of vibrancy and opportunity over there. So, um, that will be, um, and I'm really pleased to hear from uh, both Councillor um, Livingston and Councillor Johansson that we will be dealing with this next month. So that will give people the certainty that they're looking for. Thank you. So um, I won't put the motion. I'm going to. Uh, thanks. So not, yep. not on the Eastern Sports Centre uh, Recreation Facility, but just in relation to the Colombo Street Distribution Centre and the need for community groups and toy libraries and things to have space. You mentioned the Westpac hub. I'm not sure what happens when that uh, use runs out or, in fact, how much usage that building is getting mm -hmm. at the moment. And it would just be really helpful Another if you could question. include that in it. Thank you very much. Yeah. So um, I'm not going to put the motion on this because while we break for morning tea, um, Jane will find the answer to the question uh, that's uh, mm -hmm. concerning everyone around the art gallery and uh, we'll deal with that uh, when we return. So it's uh, 10.40, so if we could be back here at 5 to 11, that would be fine. We'll restart the meeting.